Hey, what's up? Sergey Ivanov. Whoa, we already clipped. Great start. <laughs> um, welcome to episode four. I almost did not record this, that, and that was on me. Supposed to record it yesterday, and not till the last minute. I'm recording this Thursday night. So what that means is I forgot that I had to record it. I record, I'm record. i recording it last minute, and all night tonight, I'm going to be up to like 2 in the morning editing this so it's ready to go out on Friday morning. Anyway, welcome to the sound of Sergey. Um, episode 4. Boy, do I have a story to tell you. So, if you remember last episode, I mentioned that I was going to, you know, a very small town to vacation, and that's why that episode had to be recorded early. I went to the location, and last time I was on here, I called it Tompkinsville. That's not it. It's a place called Burksville, Kentucky, and to set the stage, Burksville, Kentucky has a population of 1,400 people, which is almost half of the population of my high school. That's the whole town. So... I'm going to start from the beginning. We were approached by my dad. Actually, that sentence was structured terribly. My dad approached us and he asked us, basically, he took us all aside and was like, kids, we know that your mom hates the world and is scared of it, but we still want to take you on a vacation because we normally do that every summer. I'm like, okay, that's nice. And he goes, so we need to find a place that isn't, you know, a big city. Like, we can't go to Nashville. We can't do that. We can't go to the beach, obviously. Where are we going to go? And so what we decide, and this is they decided this, my mom and dad, was that, you know, there's a nice little town with a lake called Dale Hollow Lake, which is known for having very clear waters, which is a pretty lousy reason to go visit someplace but you know I'm not paying so who do I care and they pull us aside and they're like hey is this okay and I go yeah sure and we all think oh we're gonna go up there for like a weekend we're gonna go up there for like we're gonna leave Friday afternoon arrive Friday night spend Saturday and Sunday then head back First thing, we stayed there for like five days. So no, it wasn't a weekend. Second, what they also didn't tell us was this town was in the middle of absolutely nothingness. This town was, if you got signal, it was a miracle. Like the only reason we were able to use any internet was because the house that we stayed in had like a Wi-Fi router. That was the only reason. Half the time, zero signal at all. It's I mean, like you you can't get any. In fact, it's so it's so in the middle of nowhere. When we left on the way home, I didn't get a signal until we were about an hour outside of that town. <clears throat> so we leave and. We have the agreement that what what our family does is we don't like to stay in ho well they don't I'm fine with a hotel in fact I actually prefer a hotel to a house just because like someone comes in and cleans it ev- between every time I know that like there's sketchy characters going into your hotel room like there was a time that we were staying in a hotel and someone got murdered in the apartment across and so we were like we're not staying here and then we hightailed it out of there. And I know that hotels can be sketchy because, you know, stuff happens that you don't want to happen to your existence. So you don't want that, you know, in where you're going to stay while you go to Disney World. (laughs) But most of the time, my family, we, you know, rent an Airbnb. And if we can, we're going to, you know, find it even cheaper. So if there's like family there, I mean... That's what they're going to do because, I mean, it's free. Or at least they're going to convince them to give it to them for free for the week. So, from what I understand it, my grandma on my mom's side, like, has some 
fourth cousin or like some way distant cousin like so much that like they only see each other at family reunions she lives near to this lake she lives in a place called Burksville Kentucky and so I don't know how it happened but by the way this lady's like 95 if she like she's so old you could sneeze and it would she'd probably just drop dead she'd like if you were there and you like shook her hand she'd fall over on the floor and that would be the end of her life that's how old she was that's i don't know what it is but they arrange some sort of deal that we can stay there for free and she's leaving here's the catch the reason we were able to score that deal was that she was leaving because her house was being renovated. Yeah. We stayed in a home that was in the middle of being renovated. So half the time, the rooms that we had, we couldn't be in. So it's already off to a bad start. We leave on Thursday and we get to the house and, you know, I don't need some huge mansion, but also I don't want to be uncomfortable. Like, and thankfully I didn't have to share a room with anybody, but we walk into the house and I walk in and something's, something's weird and I, I don't know what it is. And I walk in and I realize, oh, this house smells awful this is the worst smelling home i've ever been in and i don't mean like old lady or like old people smell like the smell of an old person's house that's not what i mean because i've smelled that before too that's not good but that's fine i know what this is this is a different smell altogether this is a musty this is and I even asked my dad because what happened was I went into my room and I was like, man, and it wasn't just the smell because there was also like a basement. That's where my brother and sister were staying. I went down there to check that out and I walked down. I opened the door to the basement bedroom and I nearly passed out. I nearly passed out just from being there and that wasn't because of the smell and so my first thought was like is there like a mold problem is there like a co2 what's what's going on and what I realized was no she just hasn't been in the house this like 95 year old lady just doesn't go into any part of her house she doesn't change the sheets which and i'll get to that in a minute trust me doesn't change the sheets doesn't vacuum doesn't clean the house except for her bedroom the living room and the kitchen and like the bathrooms except for that nothing had been touched since maybe the early 2000s so it's just 20 years of it not being even no one even went into the bedrooms and it's so bad i the whole trip i couldn't even go into the basement because i nearly passed out when i went in there because it's just the it's so musty and there's such a lack of actual air and circulation and like breathable oxygen that i nearly passed out when i walked down the stairs like i was getting lightheaded when I went there and my own bedroom was the same way but the worst part was the bedroom I stayed in the bedroom that I was given to stay in that was where she kept all of her old lady junk like I got the bedroom we're like oh we just went out of the way just toss it in there you can't even move around in the the only way to access the bed was from one side because the bed was in the middle of the room up against the wall but on the left side it was literally cluttered with like quilts 
and pillows and boxes and like dress there was literally maybe 15 square feet of walkable space in the room not even 15 maybe 10 maybe 10 square feet of space where you can walk and then there's the bed and that's all the space that you have in that room it was literally like a hoarder's house it was literally piled up you couldn't move and the worst part was the bed then all of a sudden i'm not allowed to sleep in the bed because my mom goes listen the, this this kind old lady she she knitted this quilt by herself it's very precious to her and we don't what well, if it's so precious then why is it just if it's so important then why don't you use it what's it doing there but the worst part about that the worst part i don't know what it was i don't know what happened but this genuinely freaked me out i go in there and it's, it hasn't been touched in so long that there's dust on the bed, like a, a film of dust on the quilt on top of the bed. And I'm like, what's my sleeping condition going to be? And I look at some of the pillows that are there. I smell them. And it's the same noxious fumes and just junk and just built up awful that was in the basement. And so I decide I'm not even going to sleep inside of the bed. I'm just literally going to sleep on top of the quilt the whole time. But what I realized the second night, I woke up and I felt something like on my, on my right arm, on my forearm. And I'm like, what is that? And I pick it up. There is broken glass in and on top of the bed. This, I'm not messing around. You go in the bed, and while you prepare to keep it for other people... I'm going to turn this down because it's, it's clipping. While you prepare to keep it for guests, people who are staying in your home, your family. It's so bad that there is broken glass in the bed. In the bed, there is broken glass, and on top of the bed... And you didn't even have the forethought to check. All right, hey, maybe there's broken glass. Maybe that's not a good thing. I don't even know how that would have got there. Because it was clearly hadn't even been used in like 10 years. How'd the glass even get there? All right, I'm sorry. Calm down. Take a breather. Gonna, you know, count to 10 or do whatever they taught you in elementary school that probably doesn't work. Anyway. <clears throat> but then I walk out of my bedroom. And this is like all within the first 10 minutes of getting in the house. We unpack. And then we brought our own, we brought some food. And so we're looking for spaces in the fridge and I'm helping my mom and we open the fridge and I nearly vomited because the fridge, like it was clear that there was rotting something like it was not most of the, and we looked most of the stuff in there was past the expiration date. I couldn't, I, I couldn't even go in the kitchen most of the time because the refrigerator, it smelled so bad. It was one of the worst smells I've ever smelled in my life. That's not an exaggeration. I opened it up and I nearly vomited. But my mom and grandma, because they're related to her, they're in denial. They won't, ex like, no, you're just, I, I'm sure it's fine. I'm t and the whole time I'm telling her, no, it smells like rotting meat. It smells like spoiled milk. It smells like spoiled cheese. It's, it's, 
unbearable. I can't even bear to be in the same room while the refrigerator door is open. But the whole time they're in a state of denial. They won't accept it. Because I guess they're like, they're family, so they don't want to think anything bad of them. So just in denial. But even though they're in denial, my mom pulls, my mom is looking through the fridge and she pulls out a pack of hot dogs. But the pack of hot dogs is, it's like, it's been cut open so they could get some of them from the little package. But it's not stored in like a Ziploc bag. It's not stored in a container. It's just straight open. And we looked, the expiration date was several years ago. That's the state of what this house was. So that's Thursday. And we all agree this, this house is bad. Except for my mom. Because she's in the state of denial. So my dad comes to us and he says, all right, <clears throat> tomorrow is our first day. We're going to go boating. And I go, okay. And I've never been so excited to go out on the lake. Usually I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And, and I enjoy it. But this time I'm like, I'm begging. Like how much can I get out of the house? Because that's how much I want to be out of the house. So he's like, tomorrow early in the morning, we're going to go and we're going to, you know, we're going to go boating. Fine. We go there and I don't know what happened. I don't know if it, you know, fell out. I don't know if we lost. I don't know if it was, I don't know. So the, the marina where you would dock the boat to get to Dale Hollow Lake is about 35, 40 minutes away from the house. And by the way, it's the most dangerous roads I've ever seen in my existence. I mean, it is literally altitude changes by like a hundred feet within a quarter of a mile. And at the same time, it's curving around a hill. This is all while we're in a truck with a giant big old boat lugged onto the, lugged onto the truck. So we show up and we're ready to get the boat into the water. And my dad goes, hold on, we have a problem. And I go, what is it? And he goes, we don't have the key. And I go, what do you mean you don't have the key? Do you put it in the truck? Is it like in one of the compartments? And we look everywhere for the key. We don't have the key. And what we realized was what happened is my dad, I don't know why he does, but he keeps the keys in the boat, like in the ignition. I don't know why he does that. But I don't think he's going to do that anymore because what we surmised was sometime when we were on the highway there, they literally just came out. And now they're somewhere on I-45. It's, we, and we don't know where they are. And so we brought a kayak. First thing, we bought a kayak from Dick's Sporting Goods on the way there. And that's fair enough. But we get in the water. And so while my, my dad is like, all right, I'm going to try and, you know, get this working. He calls the marina there and he asks, all right, is there a place where I can find a new ignition and a new key? And they go, no, the closest place is an hour away. So that means... We're just going to be sitting for at least two hours. And so my sister and I decide, all right, we're going to go kayaking to pass the time. Fair enough. But the thing about kayaking is it's, it's real hard, real hard. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. It's not fun. And so while they're gone for about three hours, me and my sister are kayaking and we think we made ground and it's we're exhausted and then we have to turn back and as we're turning back what we both realize is oh and within two hours we've gone about half a mile which isn't really that much it's not that much to to kayak 
because that's just how slow it because the because also the marina was huge it was a big marina i mean even in the boat it takes like 10 minutes to get from the dock all the way out of the marina to where you can finally go fast so we come back and we expect that we're gonna see the truck pull in with the boat we don't see it what we hear from behind us is the boat in the water we go hold on we didn't see you docking the boat where did it come from and what they tell us is driving away to where they got the new ignition is an hour away to drive but from that marina to this marina by water is about five to ten minutes so they come at us by by sea. <laughs> they come at us in the water, like, hey, how have you been? And we look at our clocks, and first thing we got there at like 10 in the morning, by now it's 4. And then we're going to do more boating after that. But I don't know what it was. I put on sunscreen. But I just got burnt. Um, it's, I don't know what it is. And it's SPF 70, which is a lot. You'll be surprised how much that is. It's still, and it's, but it was only on my legs, the inside part of my kneecaps. I don't know why only that part gets sunburnt. So I make a pact. All right. Listen. There's no way that I'm going to let myself be burnt again. Because I've spent my whole life not putting on enough sunscreen and just getting burnt, and I hated it. So I make a pact with myself. All right, from now on, I don't care if it's uncomfortable. I don't care if it makes me unable to function. I'm going to put on so much sunscreen from now on that there's not even going to be a chance that I can, you know get even a little burnt not even tan so the next morning i wake up i actually wake up at three in the morning on the saturday because what i realized was there were some spots around the town it's a small town but there's still like stuff here and there and i wanted to take photos of it and i'm putting together a project for that and so i wake up at three and get ready eat breakfast drink coffee, all the normal stuff, head out of the door at 5.30, go on a walk. And what I realized was from the entirety of the town, from end to end, I looked this up later because I was trying to track how many calories I burned from the walk. From end to end of the town, it's two miles. I walked it in like 30 minutes. That's how small this town is. But I go out to take photos and it's six in the morning, no one's there. It's foggy, high elevation, but the town is beautiful. It's like a beautiful small town like you'd see in like some 50s movie, like in uh, uh, the one where Jimmy Stewart dies and meets the ghosts of Christmas, don't kill yourself or whatever. It's a nice little quaint small town, and you know, I'm out there taking photos and as I'm walking, I realize something taking a lot of photos of, you know, abandoned buildings. What I realize is that's most of the buildings here. Probably 70% of the establishments in that town were forsaken and abandoned like there was no hope. And that's what clued me in on what kind of town this was. <clears throat> like literally the gas station was the mall. That's how small it was. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. We go for another day. By the way, every single day we went boating to the point where it was like, listen, can we, is there nothing else to do here? Like there's not even like restaurants here to go to. It's about 11 in the morning and I had made that pact. I'm going to put on so much sunscreen. There's not a chance I'll get burnt. And what I realized was I'd still gotten some sort of tan from yesterday. And I'm so orange and tanned. 
and I put on so much sunscreen, and I'm so oiled up. Like, I was so oiled up that I looked like I was about to do, like, a modeling ad for, you know, Hollister. That's how oiled I was. Like, if you saw me in the sun, the sun reflecting off my body, you would have been blinded. That's how reflective I... My goodness. You know what, Netflix? Maybe I don't care that there's a new arrival. Sorry. <clears throat> I hate when Netflix tells me that the new arrival for Sergey. And it's like, listen, I, 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 I know what the search bar is, dude. <laughs> um, it's right there. Saturday, mostly uneventful, except for the fact that Saturday, I, I have a new favorite dumb show which I was introduced to on Saturday because they had a marathon of it. I forgot what channel, but Saturday we get home at about, you know, three or four. I'm just sitting there ready to just relax. And we turn on the TV and it's Law and Order SVU. I've never seen this. I've heard good things about it. I'm like, all right, there's nothing else to watch, so let's just watch it. Which, by the way, if you don't know me, I don't watch TV on, like at all, ever. We put on Law & Order SVU, and I realized this is the dumbest show. It's interesting, because, I mean, it's Law & Order SVU, and it's entertaining to watch, but it's the dumbest show I've... There's... It's the same every time. And the whole thing was, the whole point of the show is about, like, sex crimes. And that's, like, supposed to be the whole draw is people want to, people's sick curiosity wants to bring them to them. But there's nothing about it. Like, I just watched an episode about this girl got raped. All right, that's terrible. But that's, like, in the first five minutes. By the end of the episode, it's like these officers are, like, fighting eco-terrorists trying to blow up a building. It's like, and here's what I realized. That show isn't about sexual crimes, even though that's what it's advertised. What it is, is it just, it's just normal law and order, and they just throw sex in there. And that's how they make money. And you know what? It's TV. I understand that. You got to bring people in. You got the sex crimes part that's interesting to watch, but you can't actually show that on TV and talk about it. So basically what you have to do is, oh, our whole show is about sex crimes. Ooh, that's interesting. Let's watch that. Boom. And you're watching some episode about some fat kid who killed someone because they made fun of him for being fat. But the person that made fun of him was really, uh, they were fat before. And then they became anorexic, so they have self guilt issues or whatever now they're taking it out on fat people and they're killing them that's an actual episode of law and order svu that's how off the rails that show is and when you really think about it that's almost what i do on this podcast i'll start i'll start off it's like this episode i'll start off talking about this subject and by the end you can follow the breadcrumbs, but if you just look at the beginning and the end, what on this green earth happened to get this bumbling Russian idiot talking about this? I just realized that I'm only halfway through the story, and this is already the full length of the podcast. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. Actually, you know what? I have an idea. If you guys want, this is half of the story. And if you want, next week I'll finish it up and maybe talk about a little bit more because there's a lot more. There is, this is the tip of the iceberg. There's way more to get into about Burksville, Kentucky. Burksville, Kentucky is an enigma, ladies and gentlemen. I'm amazed at its existence. It's, it is sublime that it is even real. So here's what I'm going to do. If you guys want, this episode is going to be sort of a part one. 
of this story about Burksville, Kentucky. And next week, I'm going to do part two about the Burksville, Kentucky story. So if that's what you want, let me know and I'll do that. And because there's a lot of interesting stuff about it, like including there might even be cults there. I think I ran into a cult. Um, so if that's what you guys want, send me a message, leave response, give me feedback. Thank you so, so, so much for watching the Sound of Sergey episode four. Thank you so much for listening to the Sound of Sergey in general. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. And I hope that you join me next week for part two of the Burksville, Kentucky story. And I'll see you next week. See ya.